Chuck Wagon MTG is sponsored by BC Comics and Games. Welcome to Chuck Wagon MTG, and thank you for joining us for another great deck tech. Today we bring you Quid Pro Quo, a mono-white standard build that uses your life total as a resource and then flips the tables on your opponent once you've used that resource almost to its fullest extent. So let's start off by taking a look at our short list of creatures. We have four copies of a Danto Vanguard, a 1-1 vampire soldier for one generic and one white mana. As long as a Danto Vanguard is attacking, it gets plus two, plus zero. It also has pay for life. A Danto Vanguard gains indestructible until end of turn. We also have four copies of Aerial Responder, a 2-3 dwarf soldier for one generic and two white mana that has flying, vigilance, and lifelink. And lastly, we have four copies of Glory Bound Initiate, a 3-1 human warrior for one generic and one white mana. You may exert Glory Bound Initiate as it attacks. When you do, it gets plus one, plus three, and gains lifelink until end of turn. These last two creatures are going to help provide the fuel for our Adato Vanguards early off in this game. And what would a mono white deck be without at least one Gideon in it? So we have three copies of Gideon of the Trials, a Planeswalker for one generic and two white mana that enters the battlefield with three loyalty counters on him. He has a plus one ability of, until your next turn, prevent all damage target permanent would deal. He has a zero ability of, until end of turn, Gideon of the Trials becomes a 4-4 human soldier creature with indestructible that's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. He has a second zero ability of, you get an emblem with, as long as you control a Gideon planeswalker, you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Now, like most any other planeswalker, Gideon is a toolbox, and we need to use him in a way that's best suited for each situation. But for this deck, his purpose is to use his bottom ability and get the emblem. We also have three copies of Implement of Improvement, an artifact for one generic mana that has pay one white mana, sacrifice Implement of Improvement, you gain two life. When Implement of Improvement is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. This is basically here to help feed our life consumption and to put an extra card into our hand. Next, we have two copies of Settle the Wreckage, an instant for two generic and two white mana. Exile all attacking creatures target player controls. That player may search his or her library for that many basic lands, put those cards onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle his or her library. For sorceries, we have four copies of Dusk and Dawn. Dusk is two generic and two white mana. Destroy all creatures with power three or greater. Then, on the aftermath side of the card, we have Dawn. Three generic and two white mana. Return all creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to your hand. And we have two copies of Fumigate, a sorcery for three generic and two white mana. Destroy all creatures. You gain one life for each creature destroyed this way. With this amount of mass creature hate, we should have no trouble keeping our opponent's board in check. And if the mass destruction doesn't do it, we do have four copies of Ixalan's Binding, an enchantment for three generic and one white mana. When Ixalan's Binding enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Ixalan's Binding leaves the battlefield. Your opponents can't cast spells with the same name as the exiled card. And just in case, we're running four copies of Cast Out, an enchantment for three generic and one white mana that has Flash. When Cast Out enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Cast Out leaves the battlefield. It also has cycling of one white mana. And lastly, we have two copies of Axis of Mortality, an enchantment for four generic and two white mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may have two target players exchange life totals. This is where burning off all that life for a Danto Vanguard is going to pay off. So let's take a look at how we want to play this deck. We want to get a Danto Vanguard out early and start swinging, and then pay the 4 life anytime we feel that a Danto will die. 
After that, we have Glorybound Initiate and Aerial Responder, or Vampire Lighthawk, as I like to call him, along with the Implement of Improvement, will be there to help feed Odonto Vanguard's voracious appetite for the resource that is our life. Now, around turn 6 is when we want to be playing Axis of Mortality. It will be at this moment that your opponent should realize that there's probably only a few turns left in the game. At the end of our opponent's turn, we activate Adanto's ability enough to get us as close to zero as we can get without actually dying. Now, if we do happen to have our Gideon of the Trials out along with one of his emblems, we can actually drop our life to zero, assuming our life total is some form of multiple of four. Now, at the beginning of our upkeep, we trade life totals with our opponents, remove whatever blockers our opponents happen to have with our absurd amount of removal, and swing in for the win. Now, alternatively, Axis of Mortality is not actually imperative to the win. The amount of removal in this deck borders on the paranoid, making it very difficult for your opponent to maintain any kind of board presence. And casting Dawn from your graveyard can be very difficult to deal with after your third or fourth board wipe. Now, as for land in our deck, you pretty much can't get any more basic than this. We just have 24 copies of planes. Our sideboard consists of three copies of Authority of the Consoles, an enchantment for one white mana, creatures your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped, and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain one life. This is essentially for any aggro decks we happen to run into. I'm looking directly at you, Robin Op Red. We also have three copies of Consulate Crackdown, an enchantment for three generic and two white mana. When Consulate Crackdown enters the battlefield, exile all artifacts your opponents control until Consulate Crackdown leaves the battlefield. This is going to be for any kind of artifact heavy decks such as the Marionette Master decks. We have three copies of Demystify, an instant for one white mana that destroys target enchantment. This is for any enchantment heavy decks or any other decks that happen to be running Cast Out or Ixalan's Binding. And we also have three copies of Gideon's Intervention, an enchantment for two generic and two white mana. As Gideon's Intervention enters the battlefield, choose a card name. Your opponents can't cast spells with the chosen name and prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and permanents you control by sources with the chosen name. This is essentially going to be for anything that we happen to find hard to deal with. Works great on Chandra and the Scarab God as well. And we have one extra copy of Settle the Wreckage. This is just to make sure that our opponent loses all will to an attempt an attack. And lastly, we have two copies of Solemnity, an enchantment for two generic and one white mana. Players can't get counters, and counters cannot be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. This card does wonders against any of the counter or energy decks running around right now. Well, there you have it. Quid Pro Quo lives up to its name by using your life as a resource early on, only to flip the tables and then trade the used up resource for a fresher pool of life later on, all while keeping the board on a strict lockdown. If you happen to play this deck at an event of any kind, or even at your kitchen table, please let us know how you did and your thoughts down in the comments. And if you didn't play this deck but still have some thoughts, we'd love to hear those too. I want to thank you for joining us in this deck tech today. If you liked what you saw, Click that like button, hit subscribe, and share, share, share to your heart's content. Share with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and your pets. Everyone could use a little more magic in their lives. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and as always, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, ChuckwagonMTG. Now, if you could please take a brief moment to check out this message from our sponsor. Chuckwagon MTG is sponsored by BC Comics and Games. They have three different locations, and they run magic events every Monday through Saturday, and their Friday Night Magic consists of Standard, Modern, and Legacy every week. This is why I've personally made BC Comics and Games my home gaming store.